In this video, I'm going to provide a detailed explanation of how to run a one sample t test in SPSS. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to run the analysis in SPSS, explain what we're doing and why we're doing it, and help you interpret the output. Now, if you remember, a one sample t-test is used when you want to determine if your sample deviates from a particular score. And this score or value is typically the population mean, but it doesn't have to be. It could be a number that you chose based off of research and theory. So for example, for this particular data file, I'm going to use the research question, do my intro psychology courses have a basic understanding of psychology? So what I need to define is what does a basic understanding of psychology mean? And what I've decided is to use the score of 70. So what I'm assessing with the one sample t-test is whether or not my intro psychology courses mean on the pretest significantly deviate from the score of 70. Now, before you run any sort of statistical analysis, you need to check to make sure that your assumptions are met. However, I'm not going to go over the assumptions for a one sample t-test in this video. So if you go ahead and check out one of the links at the bottom of this video right now, those will take you to a video that will explain in detail or as a review of how to check these assumptions. After you've checked your assumptions and the assumptions have either been met or dealt with, you are now ready to run your one sample t-test. Now to begin, you need to make sure you know what the variable name is that you're working with. So since the test that I gave to my hypothetical psychology courses was a pretest, I need to find that pretest variable. So if I look at row 10 on my data file, I can see that, well, that's my variable since it says pretest. Now, it's not always going to be that easily found because sometimes variables are labeled weird, so that's why you just always need to check to make sure you know what it's called. Now that you know what your variable name that you're working with is called, you are now ready to actually go and analyze the data. So what you need to do is go to analyze, compare means, and then click on one sample t-test. After you've clicked on one sample t-test, you should get a box that looks just like this one. Now what you'll notice is that in the left hand box, it shows every single one of your variables that are in your data file. And you need to find the variable that you're testing. So for my example, I need to find pretest. Once you find that variable, go ahead and select it by just clicking on it and then click on the very top arrow. Once you click on that arrow, you'll notice that your variable that you selected goes into the test variable box. Once your variable is in the test variable box, go to the smaller box that's right underneath there and go ahead and put in your test value. Now that's either going to be your population mean or whatever number you came up with based off of research or theory. So in our example right now, I'm going to type in 70 since I want to see if my psychology courses significantly deviate from the score of 70. Now, once you have your test variable and your test value filled in, you can go ahead and click on options. However, people don't typically change any of the information in there since it's a very small option box. Um, the main thing that you might want to change is the confidence interval from 95 to 99, but that's really just personal preference. So once you have all your options selected that you want or change, you can go ahead and just click OK and run the analysis. Now when you run the analysis, SPSS is going to open up an output file, so it's going to take you away from the data file. And what you'll notice in this output file is there's some text at the very top and then two boxes. Now the text at the very top is called syntax. And what that is, is it's basically the code behind SPSS. And it is also a, remi a reminder telling you what you asked SPSS to run. The second table is simply a descriptive table. 
So it's going to tell you your N, your mean, your standard deviation, and the standard error of the mean. Now the bottom box is a little bit more interesting because that box is going to tell me whether or not my psychology courses significantly deviate from the score of 70. So the first thing that you'll notice in this box is that at the very, very top row, it says test value equals 70. And all that is is just SPSS reminding us what we're comparing our sample to. So just in case you forgot, you could look at the test value and say, oh yeah, I'm comparing my sample to the value of 70. Now the next thing is um, the main part, and that is providing us all the statistical information that we need. So we have the T value, the degrees of freedom, our P value, then it comes the mean difference, and then the 95% confidence interval. So SPSS does all the calculations for the t-value, so you don't have to do it by hand. Now, to determine whether or not our psychology courses significantly deviate from the score of 70, we need to find the p-value. Now, the p-value is underneath the sig parentheses two-tailed. So what I can conclude is that my p-value equals 0 0.00, or what's more common to put is that p-value is less than 0 0.001. So just in case you didn't know this, whenever you get 0 0.000 on your SPSS output, what you should write is P is less than 0 0.001. It's just customary. So if I use the traditional social science alpha level, I need my p-value to be less than 0 0.05. And by looking at that p-value, I can conclude that it is. Specifically, what this tells me is that my intro psychology courses significantly deviates from the score of 70. But if I want to go in a little bit more detail, what I could do is go ahead and compare the score of 70 to my specific mean. So what I'm going to do is go to the first table in the SPSS output and locate the mean. Now, once you locate it, you'll see that the mean is 54.96. So what I can conclude is that my intro psychology courses scored significantly lower than 70. And that is how you run a one sample t-test in SPSS. If you have any questions, go ahead and leave a comment. Or if you're one of my students, you are more than welcome to email me or text me.